never see on my feet for the eyes. The reason why I'm in luxury design. So hey shit. everybody, away. we're back. We're here with another hot person of the prodigy, the actual owner. We're here with Lil Ron. How are you this evening? I'm good. So we're here tonight at the um vote. Is it vote me down or vote? It's um Thursday night vote sessions. Vote me down is when we do the monthly balls. Oh, okay, okay. So and that's hosted by YP. Yes. Okay. So how do you um like this? How long has it been going on? Okay, oh I think we started this about six weeks. It's been approximately six weeks. Um, basically, I called Waki. I attribute LB to a lot of this as well because he was one of the ones who reached out to me and said they wanted. Right. Let's do this. It's, the time is right. And from there, um, I reached out to uh, Waki and said, hey. You know, you have a connection with this part of the community. You want to come on board and be the host. LB is already on board to do all the music with DJ. Let's make it happen. And it's honestly, I have to say, they have really turned out in great numbers on Thursday nights. And I'm excited and I'm glad about it. Okay, great. So do you see this being like a longevity thing? Like, um, yes. will it continue? Is it just a side as thing? Long, or? I mean, the reality is as long as the community supports it, it'll be here. Okay. Just like any other night. You okay. know, we, we've we had several nights, there was a time where I was open six days a week, um, and we would like to get back to that. So as long as the community can continue to support the things that we do, we'll be open for them. Okay. I'm not going to know it. We've been around now, we've had a venue for three and a half years, so it's 2011. So yeah, actually four years. And then we did a full year of just promoting the club and the membership itself. And I literally tapped into all of my friend resources, okay. which is how we started Pride. Okay, great. So what sets tonight apart from any other night at the property? Probably the vote. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the vote definitely. Because one of the things that I had to learn inside of this community is that it's broken up into segments. One of the things I've tried to do is try to do inclusion so that we can all kind of do things together all the time without the, oh, this is for this night, this is for that night. But the reality is we still have to segment it so that everybody feels comfortable. Okay. And one of the things I love about um, LB as a DJ is he'll blend that together and he'll read off of the crowd. Like we've had nights where 50% of the night, since we've been doing Thursdays, he kind of mixed in the R&B okay. with the vote. Right. But like tonight, he's been vocal all night. Like I said, he's, he's great at reading the crowd. Right. So, you know, I'm all about inclusion. We have to stop the separatism between our different groups and between the different people. Prodigy is a members only club because I built this and started this for our community because it's for us, by us. You don't have to worry about another bar that's just giving us one night a week or whatever. Our nights are based on support. Okay. You come out, you support it, we're here. Okay. When the nights fall dead after so many weeks, it's still a business. So then we have to let those nights go and maybe retry a few months later. Mm -hmm. So what do you, do you see, how do you see it being able to like, how do you think you could merge um, the separation together? Um, how do you think you could blend it all and just make it like a diverse, where everyone in one night can get a little bit of almost like a, yeah, like, almost like a Annabelle nightclub type. Well, you know what we've done it. We we literally our the first year that Prodigy was open at the old venue and here, it was inclusion across the board. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking the age range in the club would be from well then we were 21 only. Right. It would be from 21 to 61. You know, and it was great. And that was literally our entire first year at this venue and part of the year at our old one. It did the dynamic change, because Cleveland is one of those places where it's very trendy. People go with trends. Mm -hmm. And it changed, and that was why we were open all those days. And after six to seven months, you know, I was over to the side, but I was here with me literally that six of those days okay. every day. And we literally watched the dynamic change from everybody being here at least four nights a week to only be in here two nights a week. Oh. You know, so, it, you know, things are changing right now. Jobs are increasing, people are coming out more. So to go back to your original question, basically what I feel like is 
Saturday nights is probably our most, most diverse night. And I have to give Melissa a lot of credit for that. Melissa Crenshaw is a black woman. Mm -hmm. um, she has Shout out Melissa. Right. She has a very diverse crowd in comparison to a lot of the other promoters. And she's probably one of my most, or one of the most consistent promoters. You know, she, she has um, a huge lesbian following, but she also has um, the boys coming out. And then there's an age range from 18 to 50, easily. Right. You know, and what we're trying to do is do the same thing on Friday night, excuse me. And then we'll be introducing, because um, Prodigy was founded and built off of karaoke. Right. And a lot of people don't realize that, but we started, outside of the independent parties we were doing, we started a Sunday night karaoke. And y'all, excuse me, because it's time to say No, you don't want to but um, we started Sunday night karaoke and it blew up. Okay. And when I tell you, well, what happened to karaoke? Because since that's the like founding root of the club, you know what? But it's it, gone. It well, it's coming back. What okay. happened was, at the end of the day, it's a business. Right. And if I'm open, we literally I owed on the karaoke six to eight months, and realistically, we'd have thirty to fifty to sixty people in here and ten people drinking. Okay. You know, we're not charging to get in. Right. The karaoke DJs are not cheap. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to pay them. Right. But we're looking at, I've got air conditioning and heat. You know, the reality is, this place is... some air in this one. This is actually a cooler. Yeah, this cool is a refrigerator. <laughs> You're in a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. This is actually a walk-in cooler. Okay. And to turn all of this on, we have five air conditioners. Oh, okay. I've got 8,000 square feet. Right, okay. We have 6,500 to party in. Right. So to cool all of this off, there are five. I turn oh. three of them on to oh. keep everybody comfortable. Right. You know, it's like when I have conversations with customers at the um, when they're arguing at the door. I tell them all, I love you, Jeff, but understand that I can't let everybody, <coughs> excuse me, we can't let everybody in free. And you have to understand that it's a business. Right. If you will pay to go to other places, pay here. We give out free drinks some nights, <coughs> excuse me, and we have at least every four to six weeks a free night. Oh. Where you get in free and we'll give away 50 shots. Oh. <coughs> excuse me. You know, and one of the things that we struggle with is the people who come later who kind of get upset about it and it's like, well, 50 shots are Right, you didn't hit that time frame to get one of those fit. Exactly, you know, you can't come at three. Right. Because we extended the hours. Like, good example, tomorrow night, go party. Everybody should come. We've installed probably four to $500 worth of new lighting for the event. We have a, um, a professional glow painter coming in that's going to paint people free of charge for three hours. Um, so we set up up front. And on top of that, we also have drink specials put on, and we've got some um, glow drinks. We got some olive oil. That's our free drinks. Oh, free <coughs> drinks! Sure, I love, love definitely. That so the great. big thing is, come out and support it. Don't argue at the door about an admission, because we can only do so much. We got a phone party on the eight. A lot of people don't realize what phone parties are, but literally, Google it. It's literally where we're going to literally turn this place into six feet of foam. Right. Nice. And you wow. get to party all night. That's six actually, feet. Wow, that's yeah, that's actually what they rescheduled for Pride. Ours is the eighth. Oh, okay. We've got the opening party on the seventh, and then we've got the phone party on the eighth. Okay. And I'm not trying. We're, we don't do ridiculous pricing. You know, we have to understand that when we do have promoters in, they're allowed, because they're our members, and they, they have a following in a the crowd, they're allowed to charge what they feel at the door because they pay for the service. Oh, okay. You know, and that's one of the, the other things we have to explain to people. Bottom line is prodigy, prodigy, for us, by us. I was here before we had a venue. I'm going to be here after the fact. Right. You know, it, we need something that's us, mm -hmm. that's ours. And we don't discriminate against anybody. We accept all. We have a really good, I'm surprised that we have a really good straight follower. Oh. You know, it, on a just if it's a hundred people in here, you might find fifteen to twenty straight people. You don't see that in a lot of the city. No. But we've built that because people just feel comfortable here. This is a place where be whoever you are. Right. No judgment passed. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you the staff is not posting anything. Right. 
right. other than thanks for the tip. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. So. Okay. So do you all see um, a crossover bringing in more of like the Caucasian crowd, making it more diverse? We're trying. Oh, okay. we really are. We, you know, we, we you know when mounts closed, not to reopen, but when mounts closed, we really did a big effort for it. We got a little bit. We have a very small two to three percent right now that come consistently. Okay. But what we did notice is on our theme parties, mm -hmm. those numbers increase, and pride it definitely increases. Right. But, uh, but on our theme parties, the glow party, very good numbers. And I expect to see those numbers as well, at least about 10% as far as in diversity compared, because we still are an urban hip hop club. Right. You know, and I'm not gonna let that go because that's why we started this. Okay. We needed something that was for us. Right, okay. You know. Okay, well that's great. You know, it's always good to keep um, something for the people you know, who will patronize it the most, you know. Um, so far as Prodigy, um, where do you see it going in the next five years? You know, um, one of the, I'll tell you this, one of the things that we're trying to do right now is we really want to turn this into, because we've got all this space, we want to turn it into like a full-time bar and grill. Okay. So you can come during the day. I don't know if any of you guys have been to uh, Chicago. Chicago has, Boys Town, right, and they've got what is it, East Lake Shore, and they've got several places that literally they're welcoming to everyone, but the owners and the theme behind it are definitely alternative. Oh, you know, as far as the the drink specials or the name of the menu or the food that they're serving. So what we want to do is turn this into um, a bar and grill that's open during the day. But the biggest thing is, the roots of all of this is doing something and helping to move this community forward. You know, um, what we're working on right now, or personally I'm working on is trying to get some grants and some funding outside of my own funds to actually start the community workshops. One of the biggest needs I noticed, especially with our young people is, there is a lack of education, growth, and job opportunities. And one of the things that I did professionally um, is I have a job, prevent, um, well, I'm an alcohol and drug prevention specialist oh. as well as a um, counselor and job training uh, placement uh, specialist. I did that for 10 years in the school system. Oh. One of the things I want to do is incorporate that into this to where we're offering free workshops where you can complete the workshop. There's a stipend at the end and we're actually training people to work in today's workforce and become productive members of the community financially so that they can actually not just come out and party, but they can participate in the different elections. They right. can participate and make decisions like, you know, a lot of people are still oblivious to Obamacare mm -hmm. and the benefits that it holds for them. You know, and one of the, our community is devastated by drugs and disease and different things. And one of the things Especially I do- mental health. Exactly. Amen. And one of the things that I really push is, you know, when I talk to people, or, you know, when I, because I meet everybody, mm -hmm. and that, look, we have opportunities and things out here that can help us do better, succeed, and have a better life in the future. So we have to take advantage of them so that we can contribute back to them for the generation behind us. Okay. So really, right now, the big push is getting some funding for some job placement and training. Especially when you look at, um, in our community, where we've got transgender. I completely understand that struggle. Yeah. Even and trying to get a job to exactly. be able to support your My thing is, everybody should be allowed to be who they are. We just have been granted the right to marry in every state in the U.S. Exactly. Shout out to And we need to everything. take advantage of that and as well as move forward and make every job recognize us for who we are. Yeah. Whether it be I'm recognizing myself as a homosexual male with a lover slash husband or wow. a male transgender as a female, that respect has to be given and we have to create job opportunities for those people so that they don't have to go to the streets or other mechanisms exactly. to make a living. Exactly. That is seems like a very serious I, yeah, unfortunately, too serious. Most of the time. <laughs> Could you see yourself working with um, the LGBT Youth Center? Yes. Um, 
partnering with them some type of way, you know, because something that what you were saying, like with the program, it kind of sounds like when they have um, empowerment in a way, and um, they go through like a training. I'm not really totally familiar with it, but it kind of sounds well, like that in a way. I would like, definitely want to. We uh, made the place available to uh, the ASAS versus Dunham's here for testing and uh, different training sessions they did with they had the van out here. Um, I can't remember. We just had a uh, I'm good, so Prodigy um, do, do um, AIDS testing and stuff? Yes. Yeah. That's we just told D, um, you know, pass out condoms. Oh, yeah, we have them. Oh, oh normally you Normally they're out on the table. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. We have safe sex no so You can bring us up Yeah, we normally, honestly, I, sometimes we'll go upstairs and just throw them out on the dance floor. Yeah. Uh, you know, I encourage everybody, because we have plenty, and we try to make sure, and I talk to as many people as I can, to understand that if you don't protect you, nobody at the end of the day. You have to protect you and feel comfortable with who you are and what you're doing. And don't pass off the blame. Exactly. You know, one of the things I think, social media has given us an opportunity for growth and self uh, devastation to a degree. Yeah. You know, because it's amazing how people will use it in such a negative way. You know, it, there's no reason to be angry at you. Right. Because of what we did. Right. So don't post it. Deal with that internally. Exactly. You know, get your counselor, get you someone, get your mentor. Yeah. But all of the posting of all the negative things, all it does is destroy our community. And and you know, you don't want to get race involved. So what I'll say is, all of the people that are social, what is it, socially economically better than us, you're giving them more ammunition. You're empowering them more. Yeah. And you're taking away your own opportunities because you've created this persona that will prohibit you from progressing in your life, especially if you're trying to be a professional. Exactly. Because jobs look at all of that now. Yeah. There is not one professional field that does not pull up your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever they can yeah, find. Everything, anything. Yeah, there are some jobs now that if you don't have one, they don't, they will tell you you need one because they feel like you're hiding it. Mm -hmm. You know, so. Exactly. Okay, well that is great and that is very, you know, empowering and it's great to see you as a leader and wanting to impact and embrace the community and build up the community because that is always a great thing because you know a lot of times like we are all under the rainbow and we all need to stick Amen. together and not pull each other back you know so one, we can be successful together yeah. you know i think one of my famous quotes that probably anybody who's had a serious conversation i'll tell them that when it's all said and done they will throw bricks at all of them yeah. Regardless of who you, how you're sleeping with that person, what outfit you have on, or whatever, you walk through these doors, and they've made their decision about you. Exactly. So if you don't stand, if we can't stand together, then we'll fall. Yeah. You know, one of the things that has always been great about the gay um, community, well, I want to say gay, the LGBT community, and there's documentaries about it. When push came to shove, the unity was there. You know, when one party fell, another one was there to pick them up. And we have to keep that. We have to in-house that feeling. And I think as minorities, we have to do it even more. Exactly. Because we are watched even more closely than other communities. Exactly. You know, and if we don't do that, then we lose something. And then we lose a part of ourselves. And we lose that unity that we need to have. Yeah, we have to stick together support one another come out and support the club because the club is not just the club where you want to go it's oh no it, it's a lot more thing yeah. I, I will tell you I'm, that's why i said our first year out i have to thank all of my friends some that are still here with me today some that have moved on and are doing other things but they saw my vision and they embraced it right along with me and when i tell you they were my bartenders, my cooks, my cleaners. We yeah, did, what happened they to were the, everything. The cooking, because I remember a few summers ago, you all did have food and everything. Well, here. two I things mean, happened. Okay. Um, originally, when we got here, um, the restaurant up front served. That restaurant closed. The new one opened and said they weren't open at night. Oh. You know, you know. So they closed at I believe nine, which is pretty much we open at ten or eleven. Right. So they're not there. We also attempt, we were doing a small plate menu, wings and fries, things that we prepared in five to ten minutes. Um, 
those things kind of fell off because that was a test market. So right now what we have is we've got about four people who want to bring the food back. But you know, one of the things that we, our struggle was it we're really a nightclub more than anything right now. Oh okay. we want to be more, but the reality is I can't promise anybody who comes on board or even when we were doing it ourselves in-house huge revenues from food. Right. You know, we get cute to go out. We don't right. go out to, we don't get cute to eat. And that's true. Okay. Yeah. Because you don't want to be chopping on a chicken. Exactly. <laughs> and you're nice the sauce. Or your belly sweat up in right. the chair. Right. Uh-huh. 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 And you got a boo-boo in the back. You don't want to do that. <laughs> so. You know, I okay. think we got to know the serious one. So let's get to know the okay. right. I mean, you Because you are a club owner, so I'm, you got to be some I'm type sure of. I'm sure it's a party. Funny, 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 funny. You know what? what? You have to catch me on those nights. Like my birthday party was a hot mess. <laughs> I had a ball. I don't remember much of it, but I had a ball. Um, you know. But you know what? At the end of the day, I have fun with everybody. Like even tonight. I don't know. The ball scene is completely foreign to me. Well, not anymore, but it was. But I love the energy that it brings. So I laugh and have a great time with everybody. You should have been filming the bar, because it's literally antics from the start to the finish because if they're not teasing me or just antagonizing the bartender, it's just laughs in a good time. And that's why this is one of the things that when I called Joaquin and said, hey, I want to do World Nights. Um, I'm getting the, you know, it's really, they really at me at it, but I need some help promoting it. And he said, I got you. I will help promote this. I will host it. And I said, great. I said, I'll foot everything. I just need you here. Um, one of the things that I thought was great was the energy that everybody brought has been great. Everybody literally comes to have a good time to picking on me, the bartenders, um, my cousin who's on board as promotions manager, which is Demo, and everybody else, and I love it. So yeah, that that's the fun of me, catch me at the bar. Oh, well that's what we need to do is see you at the bar. Ah, Get some after right. going on right. at the, the camera. <laughs> so it's like, is Will Ryan single? Is he oh, dating? dating? Is he like, I mean, you a bar owner? <coughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure you got a some goals. Some, some goals. Whoa. <laughs> well, you did have a boo. I think you still do. No. Oh, so Will Ryan is single. Yeah. You've heard oh, Will Ryan is single. I'm writing our track. Well, you two were like, this? What happened? Who is he? Oh, who is the secret? <laughs> who is the secret ex? Like, who is he? <laughs> well, I don't think secret. he was a secret. Well, who is he? he no. Was... I mean, you know, it just happens. We were together. He was there actually almost from the beginning. And it is what it is. Love him to death. Always will. How long were you all together? Almost four years. Uh, and then we get, you were able to get married. Then you all break up. We need that to come back together. Maybe we could see a ring, or was it a ring? No, we didn't get that far. Okay, in four years? Yeah, four years, I mean, uh, um, so I got proposed to a man of about, um, I am so 14 months. They got me on that. Yeah, so Will Rock Run is available to all of you who are looking. Are you looking? <laughs> or the options always open? I'm so happy to be You know what? It, you know, this is where I am. I'm single. At least one person has my attention. But I am single and um. It's Shout out to that married. one person that got Will Ronson. It'll be great to get married, you know. I've got two children that are grown, so I am on that side. Wow. So how old are you? No, I'm just kidding. I'm 38. Really? Yeah. I didn't know. You look that. great. Yeah, I, I thought like you. you look like younger than that. Great. Oh wow. And how old are your kids? <laughs> Let me dig in. My <laughs> son is 20. Wow. Three and my daughter. Oh, so you was young and good. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. And my daughter will be 18 in like a month. Oh, okay. So how do you feel about, like, are you open with everything with your children or do they not know or? Well, you know what? I came out really late. Okay. 
I was 27 before I walked in the AR. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. <clears throat> it was one of those things where nothing changed about me. You know, except for who I slept with. Right. Who I was dating. So there was no need for, you know, I, I'm still the same person. I'm still the same father. Um, so I didn't have to go through any transition. Right. So, uh, my daughter actually works the door down here now because that's what she teaches right now. She leaves from college in uh, August, but she's been working the door all summer. Okay. Oh, that's your daughter at the door. Oh, that's true. Yeah. How many students, mothers, do, does a security at the door? Oh, yeah. 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 He and she, her son, <laughs> is graduating. Yeah, she's the no, he's from high school. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah. So. So what, um, so, you know, we've gotten to know a little bit about you because, you know, a lot of people don't know a lot about I you. I know, I'm um, everybody to get to know. You're single, you know, you know you're, someone has your attention. So what is your ideal date if you were to take someone out or That's someone so to take you out? I don't know what role you play. Um, what is your ideal date? <laughs> you know. <laughs> the people want to know. Oh my God. Uh, you know what? And then he's after that. <laughs> you know what a perfect date would be? You know what? Being away from, and not to say that I, being away from you, you know, picking someone up and actually spending that quality time, going out to dinner, having laughs and drinks and good conversation that has nothing to do with the project. Oh. And being able to enjoy that person's company completely. Oh. It's all worth it. And no play to make you a dog boy, so you gotta stop All I do is work. That's what's up. Well, we're glad to, you know, have you and we're glad you stopped by the show. Finally. Um, yes, because we had to have someone drag you in here. Oh, Thank you. Shout out to Al Al. Came behind the bar and working. Uh, uh, all that work. Well, so you heard it here first. You heard it here first. You're single. No talking about Prodigy, take notes. Shout out the club, Facebook, Instagram. Oh, what is it now? Facebook at Prodigy, Prodigy 296. That's the Instagram. Instagram. Prodigy Lounge on Facebook. And Prodigy 216 on, what's that? Twitter. Twitter. No, yeah. Prodigy and Will Ryan on Facebook. Oh. And what's the address to the club? 3400 St. Clair Avenue side entrance. <laughs> so oh, okay. So we need a, uh, a zip code on here. Cause yeah. And the party is for it. That's right. what it was. Okay, because okay. it's Shout out to make sure you guys follow um, Real Ryan at the Prodigy Lounge. Yes. Comment, rate, and subscribe here. Thanks for watching. This is Running My Trap. Hey. Signing out.